Welcome to the Norwood Conservation Commission meeting for January 16, 2019. Uh, if anybody has a recording device, please let us know. That's not an issue. Open roll call. Peter Bamber. Joe DiMaria. John Gear. Cheryl Doyle. Kristen Peter. Stephen Washburn. Al Getz. Okay, first meeting on the agenda is uh, bylaw wetlands protection regulations. So, Al. Well, I brought this up because of the filing on Route 1 for the ANRAD. And one of the problems we had with that was that the plans that were submitted didn't have all the information we wanted. However, when you look at our regulations, there was no specification that covered ANRADs. So the section on plan specif specifications, <coughs> the first sentence in it, this section defines the specification requirements for the plan submitted with a notice of intent. There's no mention of ANRADs because when we wrote these, NRADs were not a common thing and it was just being invented. Okay, so my proposal is that we add to that sentence and an NRAD. And we can abbreviate it as NRAD or we can spell it out as abbreviated notice. Uh, uh, so the proposal is to add three words to that specification. And that would then require that the, the plan submitted with an NRAD give elevations and, and all the other things that we require on the regular plan. Uh, there's some question in my mind whether we need to add determination of applicability because uh, the filing of a determination of applicability is uh, uh, sort of simple and that we're trying to get people to come and see if, they ha if we have jurisdiction on their property. And uh, it's generally for uh, a homeowner or a small business that has a small property and, and the person wants to know do they have to file a notice of intent? So the outcome of a, a determination of applicability is sim quite simple usually. Uh, we have to determine whether we want them to file a notice or not file a notice. So, so I, after thinking about it, I decided, well, I don't think we need to add that in there uh, because uh, if the project is in an area that we need more information, we can require that by requesting them to file a notice of intent. And there's two kinds of notice of intent, so if it's a very small project, they could use an abbreviated notice of intent instead of the uh, full-blown uh, filing, so uh, I think we'd be covered. So that that's, that's the reason for being here tonight is uh, if we want to change our regulations at all, we have to uh, go through the process, and, and uh, that's a pretty simple change. Uh, uh, I, I found when I looked through this that there were a couple of uh, little uh, mistakes, uh, like uh, there was a D instead of the word and, and uh, you know. So typographical errors that we need to fix, but that's not, nothing that would require any revision. So that's, that's what it's on the agenda for, and uh, I think uh, John asked people to uh, uh, comment if they had any issues uh, they wanted to add to the regulations. <coughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, when we originally did 
the regulations and when we made a change we submitted them to town meeting for approval do we need to do that no, no. if, if we're right. doing the bylaw oh we have to go to the okay. town meeting but for the regulations, regulations all we have okay. to do is uh, have a public meeting a have public, a public meeting notice of a public meeting and we've done on that. the agenda and we have done that okay so this is a simple uh, change on this uh, uh, copy that was just handed out. Uh, let's see. Um, the other thing that, that struck me is that we need to better define s our slope. Um, a three to one slope means a three foot rise in a one foot run. And that is not something that we want uh, a, a one foot rise and a two and a half foot run is a, from what I have read is the most severe slope that you can actually mow by hand so if you're if you're talking about a slope that's significantly steeper than that you will not have a slope that's mowable by hand so I think that we need to indicate in our bylaw that um, any slope greater than one in three and call it three feet of run and one foot of rise because Zoe's given his rise over run so it would be a one in three and, and in, in numerous places we have three to one listed so I think that's kind of important from a housekeeping perspective um, I'm just asking this uh, should we be dealing with each one of these individually with a vote or should we be documenting each one and and voting on them as a group as a group so at the same time for instance Al's comment is what we would have to state where in the bylaw that would go go specifically um, and, and include that and to, I presume the same would apply Joe to what you're saying yeah. we would have to state within the bylaw where three to one should be in place instead of one to three or anything else along those lines so I'm just bringing that forward I don't know how we want to move forward I, I would think that we should probably um, at tonight's meeting list as many as we can review them and then vote on them at the next meeting um, I think that would do we ha need to repost a continuance of this no. yeah I would oh, you just post it on the agenda right so it doesn't have to be advertised okay, okay because I agree with Joe we would yeah. be best better that served to sense. do it that way do you guys want to go page by page and yes. just skim them and go yay nay or whatever right and we're just working on we're, the we're regulations under, yeah. the regs Okay, the one I've proposed is on page 12, with the, the first sentence on the page. <clears throat> no. Okay. You, you can keep it. <laughs> what are you adding to it? Add, uh, and, and, and red. And. And the N right is A capital A N R A D, all capitals, because each letter is a separate word in the title. Now we can spell that out uh, in parentheses. Uh, we can whatever you'd like. This is on page 12 of the regulations. Did it go at the top? Uh, yeah. It, on this, each plan. The end of the sentence, Joe. Okay. Yeah. First and sentence. Oh, okay. and. Yeah. and 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 the, the very first sentence. Yeah. Not the, the very, very first sentence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, if we had that there, can I suggest all the issues we had would have been covered in the original. Right. May I make a suggestion that we do what's typically done is we're, right after notice of intent, 
write NOI and then after N uh, and spell out NRAD and then put yeah, sure. those initials. Whatever way you this want way, to This way, after that, yeah. we don't have to yeah. make that distinction yeah. clear. find the one you were looking for on the slope? No, I it's in here. It's on. Hold on. <coughs> so, but it's going all percentages differently than what you were stating, Joe. Okay, where is it? Hold on. One second. I had just <coughs> read the whole thing. Hurry up. Did you find it? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Number seven on page eight. Page eight. Is that the bylaw or is that the regular? We're under. I'm not touching the bylaw. No, it's no, the bylaw. Yeah. It's under the regs. Do we have another copy of the reg regs? Okay, John needs one. Just one. Where was that again, Cheryl? Page eight, number seven. Thank you. Steep slopes, pre and post. And maybe we need to, in that regard, and I agree with Joe, up to the, the point of the term mold. If you assume that to mold, you have to use a big machine or, uh, or like, even a lawn that, mower. like a lawnmower or something mm -hmm. to mow versus using a weed whacker to mow, uh, we, we need to, I think... Basically, what in. I've... what I've, You can say maintain, maintain the plants because what, what made me propose that was that it, it said that it's extremely difficult to walk on a slope that's more than one foot of rise and, th yeah, and 2.3 feet. I agree feet. with you. So whether they mow it by, with a mower machine or uh, any other method, steeper than that... They're, it's going to be a problem. Okay, so now let, let's go to where the issue is on Route 1 at the, the BJ's gas station. That slope is a little bit steep, and probably if we looked at it from that point of view, we would have had some kind of a retaining wall to solve that problem instead of just a graded slope, loamed and seeded. Well, okay. eventually they'll probably end up with a retaining wall. So, so at any rate, that uh, that would require a little redesign uh, in that area. So, so certainly uh, we can fix this uh, uh, number seven to indicate. Uh, uh, How do we want to fix it? And, and that, I don't, I'm not a good person with words uh, uh, and describing Page things, eight. so somebody has to rewrite that line for us uh, so that it makes sense. And, and you see, I never understood this percent. Percent of what? You know, people have asked me that. What's that mean? It's a 3% slope. Oh, or a 10% is, is an engineering term, which yeah, means... Yeah, okay, but it doesn't... It's not spelled it, out it here. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't... For the common person. Right. That, that, you hit it right on the head. And unless you're an engineer, you don't know what a 10% slope is. 10% of what? 10% of 90 degrees? 10% of 180 degrees? What, what is it? You know, so, so therefore, just mentioning these 0%, 15%, uh, 15 to 25 percent, that doesn't compute for the average person. They don't, can't understand that. Okay, so we need to word that a little better uh, when we rewrite that line. So how are we wording it there, Joe? You know, <coughs> too, if they don't want to do like a, a retaining wall or something, they can also do creeping junipers or something because one, you don't have to walk the slope. It'll also hold the embankment. Yeah, but our carpet but junipers. The creeping junipers. 
I, I, you don't, I don't like them? Well, I don't like them for this purpose because, again, for them to be successful, it takes many years for you, you buy a creeping juniper and a, uh, the biggest one probably is in a five gallon bucket and you plant that and you have a root mass that size and it takes forever for the top growth to spread out to cover the entire soil surface. So in that <clears throat> period of time, and you've got to mulch and wood chips or something and you've got to weed it which means, again, you've got to go on the slope. So uh, I, I don't want to leave that loophole and say, oh, well, I planted the, the junipers there, and it's still washing yeah. away. You'd also get, sure. you'd get washout, too, in between yeah. the plants until they yeah. were established. And, until too, so. and it takes forever for, you know, they're very slow growing. And that's why they're so successful in some places, because they last for uh, 50 years or more. Yeah, we've got them on our yeah. property, and you can step all over them, and they're yeah. not... Yeah, they are not dying. But, but it takes a long time for them to get to that point. So, sure. uh, what about a riprap uh, reinforced slope? Well, but but let, let's let's not design the project. Mm -hmm. That's part of the issue. We're, the The issue is we don't want a, a a steep slope because you can't safely mow it mow and it. and maintain it. Okay, so. Then it's up to the consulting engineer to come up with a solution for that spot. And that's probably the, and, one of and, the, a real good solution, but we don't want to. Okay, so how are we wording it then, Joe? Any slopes deeper than one foot of rise and three feet of run. Wait, one foot of rise? Mm-hmm. And three feet of run requires engineering submission of a plan for erosion control so uh, sta uh, stabilizing the area does it require engineering yeah. it or just take the words you other than that um, generally an engineer will be presenting the plan in the first place. Right, so that's place. what I mean. It's, I yeah. was wondering if that was redundant. Yeah. Um, but really, in engineering, we really wouldn't know the whole... So the one in botany. one foot of rise and three feet of run would be worst-case scenario. Mm -hmm. Right. Without, without a specific plan for uh, slope coverage. So if we just make it, write it so that it says that that's, that's the max, the then, maximum. Th then they have to come back to us. Well, they have to engineer it. They have whatever. to design <coughs> that spot Can you so see that, that it doesn't exceed uh, this uh, slope steeper three. than require engineer require uh, specific uh, submissions for approval from the conservation commission, okay. uh, or require stabilization by yeah. other, other than. They'll come back with a retaining wall or rip wrap or whatever yeah. that makes mm -hmm. sense. just needs to smooth that out. We can look at that now and finalize the smooth out next time. <laughs> yeah, maybe you, you want to take that on, Joe? Write that out? Okay. And propose it, get it to Al? See, now I'm, I'm planning with Paul Helkiotis to look at that spot in the spring when they have to go to, to finish the area and the landscaping, and I am looking at the possibility of changing from steep slope to some other situation, and I'm going to ask them to look at that. Is there something that we have to do there because you can't maintain that steep slope? And let them come up with a solution to the problem. So that, that's what Paul and I are planning as far as that concerned, because we know that you can't, can't end up with that. Okay, I can't find it on here, but I'm changing courses. You know how when Power Lane was before us, 
and they had uh, the inner and outer. Mm -hmm. I think on the set of plans case, somebody off the street wants to come in and look at a set of plans. It needs to have. That would be on page four. Did you find it? Okay. Well, no, but I mean, if that defines the zone. Yeah. yeah. We need it actually spelled out that they, well, there's a tree filter on here. Let's see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it would be each of the different. I wish I wrote better. I've got a note to myself and I can't read it. <laughs> happens to me all the time. <laughs> we all do that. That's not unusual. It's, it's, it's a way of life for me. Don't beat on yourself. <laughs> you never write it in the work, so. But I can't see anywhere else where it would go, Cheryl. I know. I was looking to see. So, so you have so to have. So the distance from the the riverfront, you know how we do. Oh, okay, so so we have to add uh, another I. line, I or whatever uh, that says uh, the uh, riverfront uh, mm. area has to be low labeled uh, correctly on the uh, map. Well, I don't like well, to use the word correctly okay. because somebody else's it's inner definite, and outer. Yeah, uh, must be clearly defined. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, with the the whether it's twenty five, fifty, a hundred, and then the two hundred, I don't care if they want to put in parentheses next yeah, to it, but they, inner it outer. Be, it should be labeled so you yeah. know what it's So about. anybody coming in off the street wanting yeah. to review the plans, they'd know exactly. Yeah. Don't leave it up to somebody to guess. No. Do we need to list for grandfathered ones the 12 and a half and 50? Uh, well, I think we should review that. Our language is a little different than the state's. The state indicated that lots that were in effect when they passed the law were, uh, were grandfathered, but then they said any lots that changed ownership mm -hmm. after that date were not grandfathered. Makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, so I don't think there are very many lots in Norwood that the have the same owner as they did in 19, whatever it was. I think it early 70s, wasn't early it? Early 70s. There'd be few in 1979 yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So if they haven't built on it by now, let us say there aren't any exceptions other than you go the whole yeah. route. Okay. And we'd know that when they applied for this. So, we could deal with it individually that way. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point. Are we adding it or just? Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, aren't we correcting or uh, deleting that section that says if the lot was developed prior to? Is it on here? It's there someplace in our. Isn't that in the bylaw? I think it's in the bylaw. It's in the bylaw. Yeah, I don't think it's on this no. one. Okay. <clears throat> That's why we can just leave it there, and if somebody comes to us and can prove it, then fine. Isn't this fun? I remember all those nights going through this, Joe. It was a lot of fun. Well, Fortunately, we have a, a way of fixing things that we didn't catch back then. Okay. Uh, we're not locked in, so we can change, make the, changes. The, on page four, the no build area, the state regs seem to indicate that no build means no build. I mean, it's just 
uh, 25 to 50 feet, you don't put anything there, not driveways, not anything else. Um, we are pretty strict on the first 25 feet, um, but the no build area, the no disturb buffer, um, Well, we, we have allowed things to happen in the no build as long as it's not a building. Yeah, but I think the state is even stricter than what we are. And if you read the state bylaws, um, they pretty much don't allow anything. Oh, but uh, in you, the, you can in have the a city. swimming pool, though. Uh, that's uh, exempt. Yeah. Then, you know, so. <laughs> now, almost everybody that I know that built a swimming pool, after the teenagers leave and go away, then the swimming pool goes in disrepair, and man, so many of them get filled in. Absolutely. Um, we need some language someplace that says each plan must have a, um, I'm not sure what they call it, but a, a, a marker that indicates uh, the elevation that they're using. Because right now... Well, doesn't the ANRAD do that? No, here's the problem. Like the right, data. right now they're using uh, a satellite to determine an elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is nothing that ties that elevation to what we know for elevations so, here. It doesn't tie it to the benchmark. Doesn't tie it to the benchmark. Yeah. And as I talked to uh, the engineering department, they say that there are only a half a dozen benchmarks in town that everything is based on. So when we look at a map that says the flood elevation is X, we have no idea what that actually is. We know that, for example, we can find, it says the top of the dam at Alice Pond is, is a number. There's a benchmark on that. There's a benchmark no. there. But we never tie somebody's plan to a benchmark. So short of actually asking them to tie to a benchmark, we need should have something on the site that says this is the at elevation such and such. And it corresponds to uh, the benchmark. Uh, and how would they accomplish that? Well, basically, they've got a rod. They, they put it down, the rod says you are 97 feet above sea level. Yeah, they go to one of the benchmarks, and it says you're 90, this benchmark is 25 but if, but feet. But the benchmark's not really, I'm just questioning. If it's not convenient. If it's not near air. Yeah, I mean, I mean that well, could, you don't need a benchmark to determine a, a fairly sound elevation from sea level, like using a, a solid geodetic model okay. and appropriate GPS Here, technology. Here's the problem. The problem is... I agree, you, you know how high above sea level is, but you don't know the maps that we're using are at the same, use the same. Yeah, I think it's quite, it would be quite logical to require those elevations to be symbolized or identified in like one of the common vertical datums like NAVD 88 or whatever, NAVD 88 being the most common that exists. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we but need you're to, saying something else. What I'm saying is that you need to, to go... I understand you can, go to your, you can go to any site and you get an absolute correct elevation above sea level. But I don't know how that ties to all of our flood elevation maps. Like the FEMA, FEMA maps? So the FEMA yeah. map. Yeah, they're FEMA maps. Yeah. But the FEMA maps came out before they did all of this. FEMA maps okay. have changed three times they, now. They have been digitized now. Mm. Yeah. 
You could get that in, data layer on Mass In Gen Massachusetts, anyway, I don't know about the rest of the world, but <laughs> in Massachusetts, the FEMA map has been digitized, and that was the major change that we had a couple of years ago. And Public Works and I were trying to get them to do a re redesign of some areas that we know uh, are either lower or higher than the, the map shows uh, because we've changed, uh, like for example, on uh, at Peswick Park, we changed the culvert there. By changing the culvert there, and again on Winter Street, we have affected the flood line upstream of those two culverts because uh, the one at Peswick Park, you know, the, there was a stone culvert built in the late 1700s that washed out, and when it was replaced, it was replaced double the size. So that has to have an effect upstream in the wetland area uh, flooding between Route 1 and Summer Street. Okay, so there has to be a change there, and uh, FEMA wasn't uh, ready to do anything about that. And likewise, uh, at Winter Street, when we changed the culvert under Winter Street, uh, you know, near the landfill, okay, the, the brook there used to flood and uh, cause problems for people in the neighborhood. Well, that culvert was doubled in size also. So therefore, there's a change. So the FEMA maps, even though they've been digitized and modernized up to what they think is uh, fine, uh, it isn't 100% accurate uh, for some areas. But I guess what I'm saying is that we need to have some marker on site that says this is the base mark for this site. At, you know, or some is there standard. a process like you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, that seems a little odd to me to require like an on-site benchmark. I think that requiring that the elevations on their plan be presented in... Well, you have to have one station, don't you? No, not at all. Well, I, mean, I... Uh, When you use like a... Like I was saying, a geodetic model, a geoid being like the most accurate shape of the Earth's waters under the influence of gravity and rotation alone. When you use a model like that, Modern GPS technology and RT, RTK technology can get you within a few centimeters okay. of but, like pinpoint elevation, and then okay. those elevations are typically represented or required to be represented in one of the well-known vertical datums of, uh, of use, so NAVD-88 being the most recent, most common vertical datum. Mm -hmm. That's what most of the FEMA elevations are in. That's what most of your uh, reference elevations available okay. through government or, or state bodies are in. So wouldn't it make sense to <laughs> no. require that then? Yeah, I think yeah. that it would make in but my experience. I, what I'm better. saying is that not everybody has uh, access to uh, the uh, equipment to check from, from the benchmarks from outer space. So somewhere on site should be a marker that says this is elevation X and this way the guy that's grading it with a field level or a f you know a field uh, transit can go to that mark and say that's that's where I've got it. that's elevation 53 and that's what we use on this site without going to the expense of getting a um, a fairly expensive piece of equipment. Right, but playing devil's advocate, if somebody's doing a development, whether it's a single home or, or something else, they would be using a, an engineering firm, firm, I would believe, would have access to that. Yeah, the engineering firm would. Which but would then go on the plan of record, and it would be noted that it could be a spot, if you so chose, on that plan of record that then anybody with a, could go to that spot, I guess. Yeah, but the problem is that You've got, you got the plan is submitted. Now a, a dump truck driver is going to dump his load, and he's got a dumpy level, and he says, okay, um, now this is all level. But he doesn't know 
anywhere on the site that says this is elevation 53. If he had a, a marker that said this is elevation well, whatever it what is. I'm, well, I'm speculating, and you're more of an expert than I am. Just again, if you had from the get-go this is elevation 53 as designated by the uh, development, you, yeah, that spot the, would I'm, always be there. What I'm calling there. for is that our regulations should say that that spot needs to be there. Right now, we don't have so anything. In other words, don't cover up a bound that has a marker that on it. Idea, or? No, they can't. No, we, we expect one of the requirements is respect, respect uh, expect elevations on the plan. That's the reason for that uh, section. So the, that the difference is, though, that if, you're, if your benchmarks aren't on the property, for example, right, right which is very common. Mm -hmm. So you've got a benchmark out in the street, let's say. So now you do work in the back of a house. Um, you're saying there should be a monument in the back that corresponds to that benchmark. Right. right. I think they call it a station, maybe? Or a bound. Um, well, that's different, though. Well, no, I mean, if... A bound just doesn't give you a vertical height. Oh. What you need okay. is a little, what looks like a bound that a is... A little plate. That has got a yeah. number on it that says, yeah. top of this is elevation such. And this way, I anybody... I mean, you could put it on a bound. You but, could put it on a bound. Right. But it would mean when you set the bound, you'd have to set it to... That right. particular elevation. No, right. you just need to, to uh, name it at the elevation it's at. Yeah. Right. That's okay. True. And then anybody that's spreading loam can say, okay, this is elevation 14. I'm supposed to be at elevation 13, so it's got to be a foot below this, wherever I'm at. Um, does anybody? I understand. Uh, does anybody else do this? Is my question. Well, uh, almost every surveyor. Nowadays uses the new system. That's there isn't right. Anybody using the old system at all? Right, but the, what Joe's talking about is now five years later, a guy yeah. wants to work on his backyard, and he just has a, somebody yeah. out there with a tripod. Okay. So, or during the process, mm -hmm. you know, the engineer came out, he laid it all out, and it's that's fine. Now the dump truck driver comes, I agree and he's going to yeah. put it. But where's he going to put it? Well, I'm going to make it level. Yeah. Okay, so now he's made it level, but it's not necessarily the level that the engineer said, unless the engineer comes back with his multi-million dollar equipment, yeah. or thousand dollar equipment anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably ten thousand, really, but yeah. 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 Okay, can we think about it and just... Oh, we have to, because nobody one? really, we have to come up yeah, with... Yeah, we'll have to research a little right. more. And is that, okay. that thing called the station marker? You call it like an elevation benchmark, I think, would probably be. Elevation benchmark? Yeah, elevation benchmark. Okay. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying. Someone may not have, to, you know, just because there's engineered plans my, with elevations. My only concern, elevation. and again, this is just throwing this out there for people to think about. Um, given the project, if it was a small project and let's say it was in a residential, somebody's home, and they barely, maybe the, the furthest end of their property attaches some wetlands and they are not even really near it and they're doing some little whatever deck. on their property a deck or something like that do they really need to go to that additional expense because it would be it, it would be costly it's not cheap to to put a monument in it, then mark it yeah, and have it. I suppose it depends on the level of accuracy that yeah. you're requiring, right? Because well, in, that's in the whole point of it. Minutes, if it's not accurate, why no, bother? Uh, but you I'm, could get within a couple of feet. Well, what I'm saying is that, like that you're talking about a new development. I, I'm talking about <clears throat> the one that really got me was the one on. Um, 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 right near. Uh, Right next to your house, Willard. George Willard Parkway. Uh, the bounds were put in, and I would assume anybody who put bounds in would leave the bounds sticking up above ground level. But when we went to see that place, we were told that it, it was that it was at the correct elevation. However, the bounds were three to six inches below the surface. So, what do you do? Well, let's see. One of the things that we can do is we require bounds, okay? Uh, we could requ have a specification uh, that the bounds have to, the top of the bound should be... Uh, no, what I'm saying is as long as you have one point that is 
that is labeled at some elevation, doesn't matter what elevation, you can then check everything else well, to that no, elevation. But if you can't see it, uh, let, let's yeah. make, make yeah. sure that you can see yeah. it. You know, yeah. we can require well, for example, the top of a wall. For, a minimum what of three Joe's feet, three Joe's talking about in that above. area, there are, there are plenty of bounds that are visible. Yeah. But there's no elevation to them. Yeah. Right. They're just points right. on a map. Yeah. They're right. not... And if one elevation. of them had an elevation, we would be able to say, okay, that land was not filled. Yeah. So it's fine. But when you see bounds that are covered over with dirt, you say, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Yeah especially when the bounds are six or seven inches below the surface. Yeah, so, so let's mm -hmm. start by making sure that they can't put it six inches below and say that it's got to be a minimum of three inches above. No, I, I wouldn't say that. I'd, I'd say it can be flush, but there must be one bound That's labeled visible. as a station yeah. marker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You may have to dig down three inches to find it, but it's the station marker, and then you can check everything else against that height. With, with a regular yeah, transit. Yeah, yeah. I think we should research. It's a good idea, mm -hmm. and, and see how are other people doing it, and uh, go from there. Because uh, it makes sense to me. Maybe if there is an existing bound to on a property that comes before us, they they would be required to mark the elevation of it. Right, something like that would make mm -hmm. perfect yeah. sense. You know, if it's already there, yeah, on a plan. We've got plenty of yeah. bounds. Mm -hmm. So just as a general course of rule, if there's a bound on a piece of property that comes before us, the elevation will be required to be marked on the plan at that bound. And then I think the termination is a station marker. Sure. Then it becomes mm -hmm. a station marker. Yeah. Okay, we got a lot to get through. Okay. <clears throat> what I was looking for is remember the last meeting we had when we we had um, I think it was the last meeting maybe it was the one before that we had uh, the three year permit deal mm hmm Oh, Where that yeah, keeps we coming gonna, up. yeah, it keeps coming up when we were going to change it. The three years to match the state. Yeah. Match the state match and the all state. the other towns. Is the, but is that part of this? I don't see it. I don't know. No. I think it's under the one we have to go to. Is that in the bylaw? I think it is. Well, I... Uh, I kind of disagree with that. I think that you have a project that you anticipate a three-year life on, and I would like to see somebody come in on an annual basis and report the progress. Well, that's, yeah. And in order to get a extension on their local permit, they would have to come in, and we would ask them what the progress was. We have projects out there that are uh, fractions of a century old, <laughs> over 10 years, let's say, that aren't finished. Well, well Civita's teenager. property, if you will. And uh, I drive by, the house has been there for 15 years or more. There are two huge mounds of dirt within 20 feet of a vegetated wetland. No tarps, no, no nothing there, and they're just there. Every time it rains, some of that water washes that dirt off that mound and across this driveway and into the vegetated wetland. It's like a form of natural fill. So how does that, I'm, I'm missing the point. Though. So the so point is if he had to come in every year and report the progress of his, his project and you know, instead of waiting three years and saying, hey, I need a uh, extension. Oh, I don't, I don't understand why. We have ongoing um, and supervision and enforcement on any order. I don't, I don't know that it would, that we would, I don't know. Ramonda, can you guess how many open orders we have currently? Pardon me? 
Well, let, let, let's look at it from a practical point of view. The Skating Club of Boston project, we know that that can't be completed in one or two years. Why do we have to give them a, an order of conditions that's only good for one year? We know that it's going to take longer than one year. Likewise, on our vegetation management in two pond areas, we're paying the penalty because our project, the consultant didn't apply for an extension and therefore vegetation management has stopped because it has to be refiled, okay? So it hurts us as much as it hurts uh, a contractor or a developer or a homeowner that takes more than a year to do a simple project and a complicated project. Uh, and in all of these projects, we look at it more often than, than once a year. Uh, once they start at the skating club, I'll be there, if not once a week, once every two weeks. And maybe more often when they're doing something that's a, a problem. And when were you at, I'm sorry, but when were you last at Lascivitas, other than the last time I um, screamed no, about that, it? The bylaw, let me read this to you folks. Uh, in the bylaw, the... Uh, a permit determination of applicability or, or uh, order of resource area delineation shall expire one year from the date of issuance. Notwithstanding, the Commission has uh, discretion may issue a permit expiring three years from the date of issuance for recurring or continuous maintenance work. So, so what page are you on? Page eight of the bylaws. So it's in the bylaws anyway. So. You can okay. frankly just forget all about the conversation. Mm, so, in other words, we can use <laughs> yeah, let's discretion. Move on. We can use discretion in either, either issue one or three year ones. Okay, Joe. Then that okay. way it's covered that way. Yep. So the little projects don't go on like the, well, it's not a little project, Maybe but the teenager that was before us. The one that all the foundations were put in. That right. One, well, I'm asking them to read it so I can make sure I read it correctly because I just was scanning through looking for it and just grabbed that up. Okay. On the set of plans, while he's reading, on the set of plans that are submitted with us, do you guys ever notice that some of them do but some of them don't? There's no legend? Hmm. Yeah. Well, recently all... I've only seen, I've seen that a couple reading. times. I yeah, think. but there should be a legend on it so anybody can read the set of plans. Isn't there a whole... Section there's a whole sheet, there is. Yeah, the, but, whole I, sheet that we, says, but it needs to be kicked back if it's not on oh. there or something. Well, we have been fighting with them, yeah. Because I mean, I can read them because I do construction, but if somebody doesn't do construction or they're not familiar with it, it's very difficult to read what every little thing means. Yeah, I think a legend should be required. Well, because yeah. in, 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 in addition to that, the fact of the matter is that depending on the different okay. engineers, different engineers oh, use different yeah. um, symbology. symbology for yeah. their they legends. You know, it used to be more uniform, like but everybody yeah. kind of does their own thing now. Well, okay. let's see. On page 13, is initially uh, three uh, three the top of the page, the number here. seven, I thought what that was, but legend. The legend shall show the meaning of all line types and symbols yep. used on the plan. Now, if we need to add something to that I think we should statement. say plans won't be accepted without this, then, underneath it. Okay. Even we're though we know they're going to go, you didn't know that was online. That, that's yeah. on your website? Isn't I that on the application, that. though? Isn't that wording actually on the application? If, they, if they, they don't meet the criteria here, then the plans are unacceptable. So we need to say that, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, we even tell them how to fold it. <laughs> so do we, so. does anybody have any other it, issues it with that? Or does, no. does anybody want to peruse it and come up with anything on their own for discussion well, next there time? There were some uh, spelling things that, that you noticed, Al, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. 
But we can, yeah. We can send uh, Ramonda a list of something if. Yeah, then we can get that in order. So basically, yeah. everybody has to read this every night <laughs> until yeah. the next meeting to yeah. pick out. <clears throat> Are we just going to re read the <clears throat> bylaw one and then come back and discuss it? The bylaw one, well, I think we should deal with the regulations now First, and take care of and that. And then do yeah. this one and later And the bylaw on. we have yeah. to go before town meeting with, so. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Got okay. that off the list. Let's keep going. So now that we're oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Al, you want to add on the NRCC from the guidelines? Oh, yeah. So uh, add that in. We require a different uh, stormwater set of calculations than what has uh, been acceptable to DEP. Uh, and uh, we require the Cornell method and RCC or CS uh, data for New England. Uh, and uh, I think that we should have the data and the information on that in the regulations so that uh, there's no question. It mentions that we should do follow that, but it doesn't tell what that is. So the, the page with the graph uh, that shows the difference uh, between the NRCS and the TP40, uh, it's important for uh, people that aren't real experts to see that and uh, see that there's a, quite a big difference between uh, the amount of rainfall that here than other parts of the country. So, uh, and that's becoming more obvious uh, every day. Mm. Uh, so that specification should should be in this. Uh, so you'll document. put that in. Yeah. Okay. So we all Thanks, set with Amanda. that? Everybody's content with that? We'll get back together in the next meeting. <coughs> Hopefully, have some of that out. Oh. It'll be a blast. Treasurer's report. And nothing tonight. Okay. So moving right along, Al, conservation report. Okay. When I came back from vacation, the first thing that I was presented with is during the holiday season, we had three inches of rain, and we had some very heavy wind storms where uh, I noticed in my yard and s several other places, uh, trees and branches of trees uh, uh, down all over the place and, and the uh, uh, task was uh, there was on Allendale Parkway, which is uh, near the uh, Hosbrook and near the swimming pool uh, on Allendale Parkway, there was a house with a, a tree that, the trunk of the tree is on the banks of the brook, but the tree came down and ended up uh, on the person's house. Okay, so here's the picture of the tree trunk, and if you look in behind it, you can see the brook. And uh, you can also see that uh, the tree, uh, part of it fell down probably 10 or 15 years ago, and they should have known to take the rest of the tree down, but they didn't. And uh, uh, there are places that you could see right through it. And then uh, we have a picture of the tree resting. Uh, Comfortably. Okay, it didn't do much damage to the house. Uh, I guess a little damage to the shed that it's resting on. But, uh, okay, so I, I talked to the insurance adjuster that was asking the question, uh, and uh, I made the decision that uh, based on our past practices uh, that uh, they could remove the tree and I said that uh, they could cut the stump even with the ground, but they were not to disturb the ground level at all, and they were not to 
uh, stump grind, uh, which goes into the ground by six to 12 inches so that we didn't want any disturbance to the banks to the brook. So that was the decision I made, uh, and uh, uh, they thanked me for uh, acting right away. Okay, so that... Big tree. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it could have been worse. You know, it could have done damage, and it I'm didn't. I'm surprised uh, it didn't. Okay, so that's uh, one of the, uh, could be controversial, but fortunately it hasn't become controversial. Uh, second thing is, uh, as a result of the Community Preservation Act, uh, uh, you know, we've proposed, uh, uh, with Cheryl's help, uh, a pavilion uh, to provide a little shade for somebody that wants to sit on, uh, on a bench in the shade to, out there and enjoy it. Uh, so the controversy is uh, uh, generating around the fact that some people think it should be lighted up and... Uh, well, policemen, apparently. Well, mm -hmm. there's enough light in the, the site to see if there's somebody uh, there that shouldn't be. And, you know, we have the regulation that uh, we say that conservation land is open uh, sunrise to sunset, so there's no reason for anybody to be there after dark. And we don't want to encourage after dark. Uh, because it's in a neighborhood, it's not intended as a, a, a full-scale uh, park. It's a, a conservation area, and uh, we don't want to have scheduled events. Uh, uh, somebody told me that uh, we should have concerts there, mm -hmm. and I'm not too keen on that because that's not the purpose of a passive recreation conservation area. Uh, likewise, in my letter to the uh, CPC, I mentioned that this site, before we accepted it as a gift, uh, has its material had to be removed from the site at the donor's expense. Uh, Alvisos didn't like having to do that, but uh, he was forced into it. Probably the uh, contamination was found when he proposed to build a tire place there. Uh, years ago, he was proposing to have Kentucky a Fried Chicken was the last thing he proposed. And he proposed to build a tire place. And probably somebody found you know, it had to be cleaned up. And Didn't D he DP. Want to take the land back at uh, that point? DP said to me uh, that. the area would be cleaned up before we could accept it as a gift. Okay. Then they said, after it was cleaned up to commercial standards, not to homeowner standards, okay, to commercial standards, that uh, they wanted it to be a natural area and uh, uh, we could seed it with natural material and uh, let it be a, a natural conservation area. So with that in mind, and knowing uh, that the area had been contaminated, and we don't know if they got everything, uh, we got the obvious things. And I was there on site every day for a couple of weeks when they were doing that. And what they found, uh, and I didn't know going into it what they were going to find, because nobody had told me, but what they found was that under the surface, uh, it averaged around uh, 12 inches of cover over it uh, with these, uh, I'm going to call them pools of liquid asphalt. And even after, uh, I, I don't know how long they had been there, probably 25 or more years, it was still liquid. And it looks to me and everybody else seemed to have the same opinion that when they rebuilt Route 1A, and I don't know when that was, it was probably uh, 50s uh, 
uh, thereabouts, uh, maybe even the 40s. That was probably used as a staging area. And when they had leftover asphalt, liquid asphalt at the end of the workday, they just dumped it. And then mm. when they finished the site, they covered it all over and, and uh, let it be. Okay, so mm. with that in mind, uh, first of all, we could never allow a vegetable garden on that site. Uh, and second of all is uh, I don't think we want uh, anybody digging trenches uh, uh, as the electric proposal, 60 feet of trenching. I don't think we want to have anything like that. Uh, so put all these things together, and I don't expect to have uh, uh, electricity, uh, 100 amp service uh, on that site. Uh, now, since then, uh, I think it came from John, uh, the idea, well, maybe we could have a, a solar panel on the roof, which would power a small, uh, small light uh, that would be operated by a motion detector or something of that nature. And I, I still don't uh, knows we really need anything like that uh, because the people aren't supposed to be there after dark. No, that's true. So, so therefore, you know, <clears throat> I, I know it's a controversy, and uh, Paul Halkiotis thinks that we should ha have concerts uh, and things there, that, and I've been very clear that that's not passive recreation and we don't want it. We also don't have any place for large number of cars to park. It's a neighborhood site for the people in the neighborhood. Right. And with the, the new, uh, I'm going to call it a housing development of all those condos uh, at the end where it used to be part of the tannery, uh, all those people uh, have now a neighborhood site. They can go and sit outside and uh, they could bring a picnic lunch uh, or whatever, enjoy being outside instead of in their little small uh, mm -hmm. uh, lot that doesn't Plus have any. Plus, all the existing people that live on and, that and street. all the pe nice people that live on Endicott Street. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a neighborhood site. Mm -hmm. it, it's not intended to be a, a, a town-wide activity, mm -hmm. and and we don't want to ha have to construct a parking lot somewhere for. Uh, 50 or 100 cars or anything like that. I would so. suggest it just be put up, and if it ever became a problem, you could always put a solar light in later. But why yeah. does it have to go okay. in Okay, so, so it, it, at any rate, that was my response and my opinion. Uh, and I know it's controversial, uh, uh, but that's... Well, you're a bad man now. <laughs> well, in regard to the lighting, uh, is there any liability concern if someone is on the property at night and nope. with the lack of lighting they injure themselves? There's lighting there, on there the There is property. lighting. There's a fair amount there's, of lighting in that there, area. There's a, yeah. it's, a tall... It's strange to have it's it. It's right next to Big Y. There's a tall pole in the middle of the site with a street lamp on it. So it's on the other side of the stream from it. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of lighting in that area. So, so, so this is a peculiar request then from the safety office. Well, I think uh, that's standard. I, would I think for them. Uh, that's from standard from them, and I think uh, Paul Elkio has got to them. Yep. <laughs> but, but that's my opinion. Okay, and and uh, I've taken the stand that I'm against uh, lighting up this pavilion on the nightly basis. I don't think there's any I wouldn't any think the neighbors would be too pleased with the lights. Well, that's right. right. It's right outside the co those condos. Yeah. yeah. Right outside yeah. those condos. So, so at any rate... Uh, you can see the social media posts now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the, the biggest difference is the, the quote from the contractor um, was close to $10,000. Yeah, $9,300. That's not for the solar install, though. No, no that's, that's for like solar the install wire. would yeah, be a couple service. of hundred dollars. Can I make a suggestion that we finish discussing this yeah. under the CPC part? And we're just, then we we're just moving right into two. it. Okay, so uh, th those are the two controversial issues that I've uh, been dealing with the last week. And, and uh, uh, this past week and, and uh, 
couple days last week, uh, Ramonda has been working very hard, moving her stuff from across the hall down to uh, the what used to be the old engineering office where they're going to establish her. So. So we'll have to wander aimlessly until we find her. <laughs> Ramonda has been working very hard. I, I, <coughs> She's been lifting these uh, boxes <coughs> that weigh 70 pounds of, of paper and mm. carry it, moving them around. So she's been So what's next? Uh, one thing for Al. Um, okay, so uh, next on the agenda. No, Al, no, one more thing for Al. Oh. Al, the uh, property next to the second cup, um, the one that's... That's uh, all. That's right under the, the next issue. That's enforcement. That's the enforcement oh, okay. one. That's the, <laughs> the, yeah. the next... So no, you're, are you done, Al, with your report? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've so next on the agenda is enforcement orders. And uh, Joe, if you would like to start us off. Okay. That, that place has got another big piece of equipment back where you chased them out the leaf before. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Another one, yeah. So can you follow up with that? And also, can you follow up on the one on Dean Street where I showed you all the pictures of the bar and the pallets because there's more pallets there. And we think the property is owned by one of the dealerships on Route 1. It's either the Beamer or the Mazda dealership. More than likely, it's the Beamer because it's the closest to it. I don't think so. I think it's the Mazda because that property goes right to Edge Hill Drive and... Then goes? Okay. Yeah, so that was the most okay. to do. So can you please, please, please follow it up and have all that garbage removed because it's right on the bank of the brook? Okay. And since they're adding, I don't think we need to have it added more. Okay, the, the question is, uh, I'm not sure who owns that, but... Uh, it's the same. It might be the town owns it. No, uh, I checked the. I checked uh, online, and it's part of the dealership lot. Oh. Dealership okay. lot is L shaped. That one. Starts on the highway and goes back over to, to there. Edge one. Yeah. yeah. We can check so on the over. Map. Goes, we can check yeah. with the assessors, but it needs to be cleaned up, no okay. matter what. The same dealer doesn't own both of those. Mazda and no, Beamer? they got sold along the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other enforcement issues? I'll go driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it deals with the uh, property that we're looking at at uh, Moore Street, 84 Moore Street. Um, I suggest that everybody take a look at that before the, the meeting. It's um, it's easy to get to, just take the driveway uh, in and um, determine what you see and see if you think it meets, the, looks like the plan. Well, the plan's gonna change uh, uh, simply because the peer review report uh, asks for things to be changed, so. So they're working on making changes to comply with the peer review. Since the applicant's not here, I don't think we're allowed to be discussing nope. that. No. Okay. No. So let's move on then. Uh, proposal for future agenda items. Anybody got anything in mind or? The calendar for the adjustment of July 3rd. You <clears throat> want to add that for our future? Sure. <laughs> Just saying. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a meeting scheduled for July 3rd. Oh, right before July 4th? Yeah. Are you showing up? Because we're not. I'll be at the fireworks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you come to... I go to Walpole for the Walpole fireworks. Walpole for fireworks, okay. yeah. The good ones. The good ones. He said it. <laughs> they are. Any other items for that, for the agenda? No. Okay. Um... CPC representative's report. Okay. The application status. So, we decided to do the pavilion. We filled out the application. Mm -hmm. We submitted our application. We submitted it with all the documentation. And they had this thing that 
there were questions on each of the applicants submitted and Lower Pond Pavilion at the time had eight. And after our last meeting and the last CPC meeting, it went to 17. Mm -hmm. So since they're questioning our application, I would like to go down the list. Some of them are applicable. And I know, well, that's what right. I mean. So it says who will manage the project and what is the me measurement of success once the project is completed. Makes absolutely no sense. It's a pavilion with a couple picnic tables underneath it mm -hmm. for the neighborhood to use. Right. And the management of the project would come under conservation agent mm -hmm. because that's why we have an agent. So do we agree with that? Okay. okay. How much contingency is built in and what other sources could fill any funds shortfall? We did 10% mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So, so that's the answer to that one. Yep. And we don't have any oh, other. Oh, <coughs> oh, we did uh, the 10% to account for inflation. Yep. Fine. And we don't have any other funding because we're level funded. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of CPC is. Yes. So, uh, the additional funding. So if you guys don't want to go forward with the lighting, um, like trenching and having the... Mm -hmm. Which I don't. So, um, you could always say, if, if, if push comes to shove, do you guys want to pick up the cost of doing the solar uh, light? So if yeah. you guys want to... Oh, we could pick that up, sir. Yeah. yeah. I, I included some um, basically different options for... Right. Um, My, the yeah, ones. right. I mean, common sense, if there's a problem, we just put the solar light in, that's all. This is, I don't know if you guys saw oh, this. No. Uh, yeah. This is what it was. Yeah. The okay. Conceptual. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay, we will pay for it. We will pay for that. And we will install it. Is this all right? So at the end, going over questions, I just need you guys to vote on that. Okay. Okay. So then let's go. At the end, we'll vote on all of it. Okay. And it says, is the CPC the only source of funding? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Well, we would be the backup funding. So we're the we backup the funding backup for the solar. So. For yeah, but for the main pavilion and the, the cement, CPC. Well, you can spell it out if you'd like. Oh, I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does your application include contingency? Yes, it's on the first page of the application. See so early, just say... So 10% you talked about in the other question. Yes, see question. Whatever C. question number, just say that. C question. C2. Hmm. Yeah, two and four seem yes. to be redundant, right? It, it, this is a fallout thing. Is the space site currently ADA compliant, accessible to people of all abilities, person in a wheelchair, elderly person, etc.? If not, will this proposal make it compliant? It's it's a flat field. It's a flat field. Mm -hmm. so I would yes. say it com it's compliant. Hello. So we will have ADA. We already have ADA uh, picnic tables, mm -hmm. and also we're going to have the uh, slats that are graded in such a way that anybody coming in uh, up with a mobile type mm -hmm. of device or a walker will be able to easily just make the transition. Mm -hmm. So just answer yes. Hmm. Is there support by the Board of Selectmen? Not, not applicable. applicable. Not applicable. So. <clears throat> Please indicate number of current users of what, the playbook. What, what's this? Do you guys want me to there? No. We don't, we don't need it because it's conservation land. Okay. So. Please indicate the number of current users of the playground and an estimated number of users. And A, it's not a playground. Not a playground. Mm. Project cost on the front page needed to be adjusted. 
Our total cost of our project is $43,390. We adjusted it by 10%, which makes it $46,390 already did. Mm -hmm. Who are the beneficiaries? Town and Allwood. Thank you. Where would visitors park? And any legal spot available. They can also park cross street at the dam. And any legal spot available. Are there two spots in, in their own of in their street? own driveway? Yeah. Uh, right, they can walk there. Ninety-nine percent of the people that go there walk. walk yeah, it's going to be a walking park. Did the conservation commission approve of this in an open meeting? What was the vote, and were there any changes made as a result? No. He, well, yes, it was voted on. I have no idea what the vote was, but it was I think approved. It was I think it was unanimous. Right. And no, no changes, changes were made. Just. No changes, except for a potential light. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve. Item eleven. The gazebo usage requires BOS approval and scheduling. Does the CONCOM envision the same requirements? No, because no. we're not going to have it's passive. Yes, just passive recreation does not allow concerts, et cetera. How many parking spots are available at this location? None. People will walk there. Legal street spots. Legal, yeah. yes, legal parking on Endicott Street. Refer to question 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Can you be more detailed as to where the location of the pavilion will be? <laughs> Draw on map. Yes. Andy yes, we yeah, can. Yeah, he put it up. Right behind the butterfly garden. Excellent. What are the environmental impacts of building something like this near a waterway? We have it on the uplands. It is not on the bank of the water, and it's not near any waterway. Mm. Not applicable. No, no. It meets all conservation commission requirements. Okay. Peter, why didn't you just build this out? <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> so are you going on the 23rd? I'm sure I'm busy. Okay. I recommend, and I don't know who I is except for it's Joe Greeley's signature on the cover page, I recommend increasing project contingency funding from 10 to 15 percent. I should read question two's answer. Huh? I should read question two's answer. <laughs> read question two? Yeah, because it says 10% and then you guys would pick up the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he wants to raise it from 10 to 15. But why would we take more funding than what is actually necessary? We don't have to agree. Okay. Yeah. 17. I recommend I being Joe Greeley, once again. That electricity be provided to the pavilion for security lighting so that the pavilion can accommodate concerts, events that may, re may require electricity. The facility should be designed to be ADA. No, no, just uh, uh, see uh, definition of passive recreation. Okay, now we need to take a vote. Back to you, Chair. I make so, a motion to accept our answers. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Six to zero. One person absent. So, I will entertain a motion now. A motion to adjourn, please. Do I have a second? second. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.